When you're in trouble, great neighbors are there to lend a hand. Unfortunately, some people have dreadful neighbors who disrupt the lives of other people around them. Neighbor assaulted people with fish and chainsaw. Dale McDaniel, resident of Newport Ritchie, Florida, was accused of drinking too much and chasing his neighbors around with a chainsaw. While one of the residents of Pasco County blames Mr. Dale, who is 52 years old, for slapping him across his face with a big fish, Victoria Breitfeller, another resident, blames Mr. Dale for choking him. Oftentimes, neighbors have found him peeing in public and abusing the passers-by. Neighbor hires a hitman. In Oregon, Jeffrey Leonard was shut down by police after Jeffrey hired a hitman to kill one of his neighbors. 57-year-old Jeffrey contracted a hitman, whom he knew from his days in prison, to crash the neighbor's pickup vehicle off the highway into a telephone booth. To make matters simpler for the hitman, Jeffrey even provided him with a Chevy Suburban. But Jeffrey's plans went out with a fizzle after the hitman instead of using the Chevy, chose to contact the police. Wi-Fi hacking Barry Ardolf, a 46-year-old man from Minnesota, came up with a horrible plan when his neighbors filed a complaint against him for kissing their four-year-old child on the lips. Bent on revenge, Barry hacked his neighbor's Wi-Fi and used the same computer for sexual harassment, illegal wrongdoings, and to send threatening emails to politicians. According to the police who later apprehended him, Barry wanted to frame his neighbors for crimes related to the acts he committed. Attempting to burn down his neighbor's house Philip Bennett, a 58-year-old from Cartersville, was found guilty of setting his neighbor's house on fire. According to Marty Corbett, a resident of the same neighborhood, on the day the incident took place, Philip had approached and lectured him about his messy lawn. Soon after, the conflict became more heated and Philip broke one of his house's windows, doused the place with gasoline and set the house on fire. Pile of Garbage Andover resident Ted Tetchart accused his neighbor across the road of being a compulsive hoarder. According to Tetchart, his neighbor had been keeping waste in big plastic bags outside their house and was refusing to do away with them. The people of the neighborhood are highly apprehensive about the situation as hoarding plastic waste bags can cause serious health issues. A mother of a 13-year-old autistic child living in Tampa, Florida, found an unfamiliar note advising her to euthanize her child and donate his body parts towards the betterment of science. The writer is believed to be one of the neighbors, as they had added in the note that the screams of the child while he played outside made the person sick. The Race Garden Michael Carroll, a 20-year-old boy from Norfolk who had the fortune of winning a whopping lottery of 10 million pounds, has made the lives of his neighbors a living hell. According to one of the neighbors, the boy has transformed his garden into a 24-hour racetrack, thereby forcing the people of the surrounding houses to live amidst the never-ending sounds of screeching wheels. The residents of Norfolk have complained more than 11 times regarding the noise, but nothing seems to stop Michael, who has been charged with other various criminal acts. Credit Card Thief Anthony David from Florida wanted to watch an NFL game and paid for the tickets using his neighbor's credit card after stealing it. As reported, Anthony had been using their credit cards for various personal purposes and had lately even extended his generosity by buying them tickets for the match. Bill and Melissa Callahan, residents of Spring Hill, had filed a report stating their missing card was being used illegally and soon after that, the police caught 37-year-old David red-handed. In a legal case, 
David Constantine, who had been continuously troubling his neighbors, was banned from coming back to the neighborhood. Later on, he was allowed to occupy his old house once again, and David's neighbors Stefan and his wife Lucy are now living in horror. David had been continuously reported for barging into his neighbor's place and scaring the couple with his degenerate activities. David has allegedly made threatening calls to the couple and fired an air gun in their presence. Mental Torment Bottomley, Yorkshire Pennines, is a place known for its peace and warmth, but in recent days, it has transformed into a battleground between a 57-year-old retired businesswoman and the people from her neighborhood. Mrs. Wilding, the lady responsible for troubling her neighbors, had earlier accused the people from her neighboring streets of conspiring. She told the judges that the neighbors had boundary issues even before she had come to the place and that they had simply made a scapegoat out of her. However, the court, after years of dealing with the case, eventually decided she was merely a dramatist. Neighbors' Sex Recordings In a strange case of humiliation, a neighbor who was fed up with the moaning coming from their neighbor's house at night recorded and uploaded the audio clip onto the internet. Commentators made fun of the audio tape and advised the neighbors to keep their voices down. Dennis and Sandra Hawes constructed a sun terrace on their kitchen roof, after which their neighbor Charles Hart turned hostile and built the Great Wall of Fleetwood. It has become popular even amongst tourists. It is believed that when Charles learned about the sun terrace, he criticized his neighbors for not discussing the idea of building it with him. And since Mr. and Mrs. Hawes would be able to easily look into Charles's garden from the terrace, he decided to build this 16-foot concrete blockade. Nazi neighbor. Alexander Huron, now living in Fareham in Hampshire, is an average-looking 90-year-old man. His neighbors treated him in a friendly way until they came to know of his true identity. The 90-year-old man was once a Nazi who used to work at the concentration camps established to kill Jews in Germany. Besides that, he is even believed to have been a part of the Troniki labor camp in occupied Poland, where 6,000 Jews were murdered on a single day. The Flag In a Michigan neighborhood, a man dangled a noose and Confederate flags from a tree in front of his house. Robert Tomanovich, the man behind the idea, hung one more noose when somebody from the neighborhood reported his activities. The neighbors are also concerned about little children who could hang themselves from the tree by accident if they tried playing with the ropes. One of Robert's colleagues from his office stated that they welcomed the idea very much and had no issues with it. Poop everywhere. At a Richmond landmark, a couple, Gus and Lucille Medura, are locked inside their homes because of the unnerving stench that comes from the house next door. They can't even step into their garden. On a Thursday, a truck with a 30 cubic yard container came to Paula Bolly's place and dumped a huge amount of fresh fertilizer in their front yard. Since then, the place has smelled so bad that no one from the neighborhood is able to come out of their houses or invite anyone inside. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe.